gifts up. It's a gift 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 up. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. Honey, I'm sorry, I'm late. I woke up late and I had a few things to work on. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Did I get the milk for my coffee? Yes. How is everybody today? How are you doing? Thank you so much, Sammy, for the six months. Thank you, Pyro, for the gifted. Rebellion, dobry večer tebe toži, čuvak. Dobry den, druzia. Hello. I haven't had my coffee yet, so I, I've been running on pure adrenaline. I stayed up a little late because we had, um, we started doing these, uh, kind of, kind of monthly meetings in, uh, in Vishojo, just whoever wants to join. They're not mandatory, but it's like, if you're around and you want to join and usually there's staff and some talent. And so I stayed up late because we were hanging out with the girls and the staff and it was awesome. And then I had to wake up early because I had to do a few things. And then I had a few more things. And uh, we didn't end up recording the podcast last night because we miscommunicated the time. So we're going to record the Patreon on Friday. But today's going to be an exciting day. I am streaming. It's a gift up. We're signing some posters. And then I have a meeting with my manager. And then I'm going to be watching Mint stream on the YouTube. What about y'all? How's your night going? How's your day going, huh? Thank you, BW, for the five months. Thank you, Frick. I am. Um, I do arrive exactly when I'm meant to. And Captain Windfall, thank you so much for the five gifted. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Also, I only had half a bottle of wine, but still not hungover. Although I do, I do have to say, I had to really use my self-control to not finish the rest of the wine. I don't know how that works. Alcoholism. Where I haven't drank in a long time, but drinking my favorite drink, I had to really like, I had to basically like repeat mantras to myself last night to not drink the rest of that red bottle of wine. I really, really, really had to like, no, you're only having half. You don't want to start drinking like crazy again. What's going on? And it just felt so, I'm telling you, it felt tougher to drink half a bottle of wine and not drink the rest of it than if I just had not drank at all. Thank you, Scion. Yeah, we've had them for a little bit now. 
Oh, I get you, GD. I get you. It was really tough. It was genuinely so tough, and it kind of made me worry about, like, does, does this mean I'm going to have to <laughs> restrict myself like this forever? It's just, um, yeah, I'm telling you, it was really hard for me to not drink the rest of it. Thank you, Captain, for showing up. I appreciate it. I'm going to help your work go by faster. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. You might sip some while painting Warhammer minis. That sounds fun. Yeah, I definitely noticed that it's easier for me to drink nothing than it is for me to drink one, one drink. If I have one drink of something I love, it's tough. And I feel yesterday too was the fact that I was drinking during a really fun collab. And then I, I like drinking when I'm already in a good mood. I try not to, like, I'm very strict with not drinking when I'm in a sad mood. So... Yesterday, after the collab, I got a little bit of work done. And then, like I said, I was hanging out with the Vishojo girls and some of the staff. And I thought, why not keep the party going? <laughs> and no, no, I did not keep the party going. I... Uh. And fun fact, I'm still feeling a little lethargic. So if you are wondering, waking up at 10 a.m. to go for a run... Probably would have been better than waking up at 10 a.m. to do work and, you know, having had a little bit of wine last night. One definitely energizes me and the other one a lot less. Mm. I'm telling you, it was tough. What time does Minty Day start? I think 7 p.m. So we got a little bit of time. I can stream until 4 because I have my weekly meeting with my manager at 4. Um, I have a weekly meeting at 4. And I like to go to my weekly meeting because the managers get to know me better and then they're able to make decisions that I, um, you know, that way they know how to answer emails from as, as me and things. Not that they answer emails as me. Hold on. Sorry. I argued a minute to like gather my thoughts. It, it's been a really, really long morning. I've been, oh my God. Um, yeah, sometimes when it comes to like merch or things like that, managers will sometimes answer and give their opinion on things. And mo more often than not, it aligns with my opinion. And I think a big part of it is because we talk so much. We talk usually every week and we we make time to catch up and discuss through situations. And it kind of helps us vibe with one another. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, Moon Meadow. Thank you so much for coming in, Raiders. Hi. Uh, I'm just about to have my coffee, so I'm not fully... I have been awake and I have been up, but I wouldn't say that I'm really fully awake yet. And uh, yeah, how are you? I hope you had a great stream. You're looking forward to the merch. You said the magic word. Oh my God. Do you mean the merch that just got released? Wow. Get it now. <laughs> yeah, my day has basically yes to start yet yet to start dog. That's why I'm like I haven't gotten into that rhythm yet. Even though I've already done a bit of work, I haven't gotten into the rhythm. You drew oh, oh you ran away from a lot of monsters. Why did I think you said I drew a lot of monsters? That's really exciting. That's really, really, really exciting. Ooh, an avocado. Thanks. Easiest. I've never heard of that game. I've never, ever heard of the game. Thank you for the bits. That new content warning game is so good. Actually, I got invited to a collab next week. Um, I got invited to a collab next week for content warning. I'm really, really excited. It's somebody, one of the people I've never collabed with before. And one of the people I collab with when Tiny Fleshman was alive. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to spoil this collab, but I will. Uh, Haruka, Joel, and Nags. Joel organized it. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be Joel, Nags, me, and Haruka. I think it's going to be quite quite a quite a funky lobby. 
Wait, Nags's name is also Joey? We have a Joel and a Joey. Oh my goodness. Sacrifice Nags first. Not if we sacrifice Joel first. Hold on, give me one moment. I want to get some cozier socks. I want to get some cozier socks. Yeah, Moon, I saw that. I saw that. Hi, Audi. I saw that. I saw that uh, and I heard about that, but eh. Hopefully by the time we play it, it'll it is gonna it is gonna change. We are back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm alive. I'm here. I'm ready. There is maybe a chance I don't sign posters today. We'll see. We'll see. I'm uh I'm not gonna lie, my mind is a little bit elsewhere at the moment. I'm uh I'm thinking. I'm sorry, I'm I'm with you, but my mind is elsewhere, Momos. I'm thinking about other things. I'm thinking about other momos. Where is my mind? Um, I'm thinking about work that I have to do instead of just relaxing and focusing on stream and enjoying the best part of my day, which is streaming, frankly. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna ease into it. Other momos. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking it's not you. It's just I'm thinking about other momos while I'm with you. Uh, are there are other momos. Always. There's momos in the void right now. There's momos who haven't been reborn from the soup. It's the evil momo, isn't it? He's on my mind. What evil momo? I don't know what you're talking about. No, please don't cry. <laughs> No! <laughs> Please don't beg. Please don't cry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I woke up early yesterday. Yesterday, I woke up at 6 a.m. Today, I woke up, I think, at like 10. And I was just really, really sluggish the whole, the whole morning. <laughs> Hello, ugly girly. Okay, that just made me laugh so hard and brought me back into the present moment. <gasps> That's really funny. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. That, that, like, I needed that. Thank you. Good morning, Stinky. Good morning, Stinky. That's me. I am Stinky. Actually, I do have to wash my hair. I'm not going to lie. I, I forgot. Oh, I remembered. We talked about a really gross thing that um, Heavenly Heavenly had seen about wigs and hair. And I really want to wash my hair tonight. I'm scared. Born to the soup, to the soup we return. Exactly. Yeah, maybe they can, Darians. Maybe they can. Will you wear wigs? Yeah, it was disgusting. The collab yesterday was really fun, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot of things. And I did not know what the word goon meant. I thought goons were just kind of like grunts, you know, like low-level uh, monsters or low-level people in a video game or something. Like, oh, these goons, you know, like the grunts, the goons, the... No, apparently... Uh... Apparently, gooning is uh, something a little different. Apparently, gooning is is a little, little, little bit different. It's, it's a little, little, little bit different. 
It's got it's got slight slight differences. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what else did we learn yesterday? Goons. Oh, I was right. So goons is a thing. Okay, okay. So goons, it's like twerps, right? Like when you know when you watch the Scooby Doo and stuff like that. There's always like, ah, you little twerps, you little dweebs, right? When I think of goons, I think of like twerps, dweebs, henchmen. You can hire goons, but can you hire goons to... Wow. Well, I have learned a lot of things. You know something I noticed yesterday? Okay, I wonder if this is actually something. When Froggy's bird screeched, both guys were kind of knocked out of commission for a moment. The screech affected both men, but it did nothing for me in Haruka. Like, yeah, I thought the screech of the bird was loud, but it wasn't enough to kind of stunlock me. But it stunlocked both of them. Is this the secret to repelling men? You just need to get a bird? It really felt like it was kind of like a dog whistle that we didn't hear. Seriously, I need to know for serious, for those of you watching from the stream. For those of you... did Was it very loud for you? I think you're just deaf. No, it was loud, but it didn't... Um. It didn't stunlock me in a way that it stunlocked the guys. Yeah, it was high pitched, but I don't know. I feel like sometimes I sing very high pitched anyway. Oh, it was super loud and Bricky's POV. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's just as you get older, <laughs> you lose high frequency hearing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, I have a feeling that the high pitch might affect men more than women, but there's no, you know, there's no study done on it. We're not talking about, we're not talking about it from experience. We do not know. I wonder. Yeah, but I just noticed both guys that like stunlock them and took them out for a little bit. Sounds like a good stream experiment idea. I think so too. I get a bunch of streamers, play really loud pitch sounds to them and see if it st stunlocks them or not. Hello, Axel. Thank you for watching. I wouldn't really say it caused them pain, Khalid, but it definitely kind of, again, it's just stunlock them for a moment. How can we repel men? Let's find out. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> oh. Oh, Major, I'm so sorry to hear that. How to discombobulate men. It, this was in IRL. So one of the girls who was in call with us, Froggy, she had a bird. Well, she still has a bird, but that bird made a really high screech. And it didn't really affect Haruka and I, but it affected the guys. So it made me wonder if that is something that I got to add to my repertoire of things to repel men with. I'm just going to start carrying around a little soundboard on my phone with bird screeches and just kind of play... Play bird screeches. No, Kalita, that I don't believe that. Really? How to repel men? Make astrology your whole personality? I don't have to make astrology my whole personality. Aquariums are naturally repellent. We are naturally seen as aliens, so I'm good. You're gonna become more of a menace. <laughs> I just imagine, okay, if in a week you read in a newspaper, woman arrested for playing loud bird sounds to strange men in Canada. That's me. I'm, that's me. 
you're gonna you're gonna point at that and be like, that's my Matara. Y'all just know it's me. Having a kombucha and it's so cold that it's like knocking me off guard a bit. <laughs> I told you, I'm having a day today. I think mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I'm having a day. I don't think I've heard dog whistles before. But isn't that the whole point is that you only hear, the only dogs hear them, right? Can already picture Gun Run shaking his head as he pulled out the bribe briefcase and books a flight to Canada. The funniest thing is I first read that as Barbie briefcase, and that also kind of fits. What kind of kombucha? It's actually a cola flavored kombucha. No sugar, no calorie. It's like five calories. Roach Mom repels men. Yes. Hi, Zeppelin. Yeah, we're doing an EU friendly stream. Maybe we won't sign posters and just kind of talk and yap a little bit because I'm definitely I'm definitely feeling a little bit <clears throat> a little bit. I got a lot on my mind today. I got a lot on my mind today, but it's good. I uh, it's just been one of those weeks where everything is good. Everything is happy. I'm, you know, fulfilled, glowing, all that. But it's just a lot. I'm kind of being pulled in a lot of different directions. And um, I, I want to be there for a lot of people in my life. Like, for example, yesterday, I wanted to be there with the Bishojo girls, right? Tonight, I want to be there uh, for Mint. Um, also, my family has been wanting me to be there for them. And uh, it, it was my friend's birthday this week on April 1st, actually. And I want to be there for her. There's a lot of stuff that is kind of going on. And I'm just kind of trying to, with, with being pulled to every side, I'm not making time for me. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's just kind of, kind of how it is, but that's okay. I also really like being there for other people. It does make me very happy, but unfortunately, sometimes I have to understand that making other people happy at the end of the day won't always make me the happiest I could be. So I gotta, I gotta focus on my stuff too. Speaking of the podcast, I listen, I don't want to brag, but we recorded episode two yesterday. It's Mint. Not only I think I think Mint is is like, I think she's back. <laughs> I think Mint is back, baby. She is. Oh, she was so. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I. Yeah. Yippee. Let's cheer. It was, I laughed my ass off while we were recording. And it was kind of a slightly serious episode because we, um, we talk about a few serious things, but there's, is the podcast not live? No, uh, we record. So we're probably going to be recording all the, on Wednesdays. So we record on Wednesday for it to go live Monday because we have somebody edit in images. We have somebody edit in the audio, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's not live. I think it's better not that it's not live. I think it's nice that it gets a little bit of post-production. I think that's the word. Yes, there will be an audio. We actually will talk about it on the podcast. There will be audio only on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. It's just going to take a little while. My hope is by episode four. So it is taking a little bit of a while. I'm very, very sorry. I've just been a lot of stuff. I know not everybody wants to watch it on YouTube. I get it. Also... Um, we should be able to, YouTube does this really annoying thing. I'm going to show you guys. So we can monetize. We have everything we need to monetize. But I'll show you this just so you can see. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me undo the webcam. I put on, I put on the webcam for, um, for if I sign posters, but I can just take. Okay. It takes a while to get updated. All right, let me show you. So we aren't able to monetize right now for about a week, even though we kind of hit everything that we're supposed to hit. No, the watch time. 
it, the problem with the watch time is that it takes okay let me let me show you so you can understand because i don't know how to explain it properly when we uploaded the videos this was like showing data as of march 28th but we're already the 4th of april and then now it's showing showing data as of March 30th, but the podcast went live April 1st. So we can apply for monetization in two days. Sorry for the light mode. I'm never on on this. Hold on. Let me change it to dark mode. I don't know how to change it to dark mode. We're stuck on light mode. Um, enjoy the light mode. Um, so... Uh, we're not able to apply for another two days until it gets to April 1st. Which is kind of annoying because, uh, like, you know, but it's fine. For the second episode, we should be able to have monetization and all will be good. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone is dying at the light burning. <laughs> all the Patreon episodes will be available on Patreon after the podcast ends. We, like like I said, for now, let's just keep going with it. It is temporary, the podcast, but let's just keep going with it. Everything will remain. Uh, unlike Unus Anus that deleted everything, we are going to keep our stuff on both Patreon and, although we will, if possible, like make it so people can't. I don't know if that's a possibility then. Oh, Mm, I wonder how that works, how we'll be able to like back up the episodes. But yeah, wasn't Min having something today? Yeah, 7 p.m. Well, we'll figure it out as, as time goes on. As time goes on, because uh, listen, listen. But it was, it was really, really fun. I'm telling you, I, I laughed so hard our last episode. And I think we're recording the Patreon tomorrow. Which is fine. Looking forward to hearing the audio version. Yay! We'll get there. Me too, Dil. That's why uh, I'm really, really excited at the at how the internet has kind of grown compared to a little bit before. If you talked about money in any way, shape, or form, you were a sellout. But it's like, you know, it's it's it costs money to get stuff going, right? Like I'm paying. I say I, but we are paying an editor to edit the podcast and we paid for the logo. We're like, things cost money, right? Things cost money and living is expensive. <laughs> uh, so my my hope for the, um, my hope for the YouTube is that the YouTube revenue is enough to pay. I don't, I don't think it's going to be enough to pay for the editor, but I'm hoping that it's going to be enough to pay for like, some of the other things we might need, like extra thumbnails or extra things like that. Um, I'm hoping that that is going to be enough to kind of like offset a little bit of the costs. The time when ad revenue would pay the bills is long over. You say that, but I'm kind of surprised. Some of my VOD views are actually kind of okay money. Considering that, you know, all it really costs is like a thumbnail. Um, so... I think sometimes when people watch long form, it actually does make a difference. But I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Oh, I feel you, Golf. I feel you. It is an EU-friendly stream. That's why I think we might just talk instead of um, instead of doing posters. Will people be actually able to walk up to me and say hi at Ofkai? So at Ofkai, I will be there physically, but I will most likely be doing meet and greets from the um, like uh, the screen. And also, I will most likely be going around in a robot. Um, to be completely honest with you, I spoke to a few people at WeepCon, and I've heard a few stories of stalking, and I've heard a few stories. I'm saying stalking. It sounds very intense and dramatic, but basically people following people around, um, and, you know, kind of just being like that. And yeah, I just want to be a little bit careful. I talked about it before that uh, I will most likely spend the next year not really fully being around as my flesh woman, more so as um, just, you know, me as I am. 
And I think in the future, as kind of things maybe change or maybe the people that I'm very close to are a little bit more kind of revealed than by yeah, after now, most likely, uh, if I do go around the convention, I'll be taking precautions to hide myself and, you know, I don't want to tell you all my secrets so you know how to look for me, but uh, yeah. I've told you all before this, but uh, one time I went to a convention that was sponsored by Takis and I just came up to the people giving out the Takis and I asked them for a shirt. And then I walked around with that shirt and I just looked like one of the people who works for Takis. <laughs> I have a lot of I have a lot of staff shirts and things like that. So chances are <laughs> I, I like I like to cosplay as staff very often. Uh, to be to be completely honest with you, I think that's one of the best disguises, and it just it just works. It just works. So, yes, you will be able to meet us. You will be able to greet us, and I will have somebody going around the convention to buy merchandise of me and things like that. Uh, for the panel, I'm not sure yet how they're gonna they're gonna set it up, but for the panel, I would love it if we were in the room with you guys, but maybe just you know through a partition or anything like that. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the problem too is like if you are around. So, for example, Quinn, love the guy, right? But if I go somewhere with Quinn, like people will recognize Quinn and then they they might not recognize me right away. But then if they see my flesh woman with Quinn, they'll be like, oh, I think it's her. So it's just easier to not. Are we vetting questions ahead of time? I'm not sure. I would like that. Elite, thank you for the six months. I would really, really like that. The voice is hard to miss. I have a story from many, many years ago. I was, there used to be this, this Twitch group called Main Menu. Many, 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 many years ago. And many, 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 many years ago, there was a Twitch con in Long Beach and they did a party. They did a masquerade Twitch party where people will, well, where people had to dress up at a masquerade. And I was wearing a mask, like a, like those pretty eye masks and everything, and a wig, and I looked completely different. And I went to the washroom with one of my friends, and as I started talking, because, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, when women are in the washroom, we just yap. So I walk in the washroom, and I start yapping with my friend, and then another person walks in the washroom, and she goes, oh, my goodness, is that? And then they said you know flesh woman and I went how did you recognize me and she goes your voice it, it's it's the way you speak if I don't speak you might not recognize me but if I speak I am in big trouble that's good Gulf Coast that's good that's good that's good that's good I like it I like it I like it simply do not yap but it's tough. Have you have you been to my stream? Do you know how much I love to yap? It's tough. No yapping is no life. No ball, no life. No yap, no life. It's true. So yeah, I think for now, just kind of, I'll, I'll be probably a little bit more strict with it at the start. <laughs> But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I have a few other things, which I don't think they're really big tricks. But uh, I mean, usually if I'm at a convention and I'm trying to be a little bit incognito, I, I think a place that you get recognized very easily is going for food next to the convention. If you're grabbing, I don't know, pizza right outside the convention, you know, so usually, I don't know if this is really a secret, but and I don't mind talking about it because I don't think it's a really, really big deal. Um, just go kind of far. And it doesn't even have to be kind of far, but if you go even 15 minutes away by Uber or something, it already. So if you are done with the convention and you're going for dinner, go for dinner a little bit, you know, go for dinner a little bit away. Don't go for dinner right next to the con. Thank you, Frozen, for the raid. I appreciate it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that it's fine. I think that it's fine if you go a little far away to eat, right? Have ever done voice acting? No. No. I am interested, but I gotta be completely honest with you. I want to be very, very, very transparent. I would be interested in a voice acting gig as long as all I would have to do is voice act myself. I do not, I am not a voice actress. I do not know how to be a good voice actress. I do not know how to make voices. So if I had to actually learn and rehearse and practice, not going to happen. But if it's just like, hey, Matara, can you do the hello, darling? How are you today? Let's talk. Basically, my voice. I could do that. I could do that. Yeah, as long as I'm not slipping into a character and it's just me, I can do that. You said the same thing about singing and looking, you know. Ah, ah, ah. It's not about advice, Tian. It's about actually being good at what I do. And I have not, I am not, I do not have the energy or the willpower to learn another new thing. Would I go only, I would only go on a secret drink date with Mata and live with the secret. Hey, there we go. The secret lives in your imagination. I hope you have a good one. Issei, that sounds super fun. Devil, that's kind of that's kind of my current my current typecasting. Mother, villain, <laughs> wench. That's me. That's me, that's me, that's me. Mother, villain, wench. Maybe Kalite. I don't know if I would do a whole cover, but I could maybe sing it at karaoke. That's fair, Tio. Thank you for respecting my wishes. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Ronan. She's taking care of herself, though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it. Trust me. All. All. All she needed was uh, to get to get back to normal, and she's she's already killing it. You got nothing to worry about. If anyone goes on a secret date, there's a chance they might get impregnated by me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if Mint knows how Momos are born. I'm going to talk to her about it. I'm going to talk to her about it in one of those episodes about uh, if she knows how Momos are born. Because I, I know she saw that picture of her pregnant accidentally. Um, but I don't think she realizes that in order for Momos to be born, their host must die. Well, must die is a big word, but, you know, the Momos really come out kicking, screaming, clutching, and doing their best, so... Ugh. You know. Oh, did I not retweet this picture? Oopsies. What's a Momo? Can everybody show I'm here for the Twitch Val drop what a Momo is? I guess she is dead, so it does make it a little bit better. I guess she is dead. <laughs> Sons of the Patreons. Okay, I kind of love this one. <laughs> My god, we have so much good fan art. I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy with all the fan art. It looks great. Y'all are wonderful. Ah, I, I feel so spoiled i feel so spoiled i feel so appreciated i feel so it's i'm excited i'm so excited so i am a parasite yeah but you're our parasite we're all parasites here baby i parasite you you parasite me millennia you're you said it not me don't speak the truth out loud don't don't speak the truth out loud or they might silence you. Do not do not speak those words out loud. I never think about that song until somebody writes the lyrics or sings it. I'm like, oh, damn it. Tess, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you. 
it's symbiosis if we need each other. We really do. Mac, you're going to have to ask her. Anything that kind of has to do with mint, you kind of have to ask her. I'm sure she has some ideas of things she wants to do and things she wants to say. You live rent-free in our heads. You live rent-free in my head. All I think about is you all the time. This coffee is not doing anything. Oh my god. Mm. This coffee is doing nothing to me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing my best. I'm trying, Matara. I'm really, really trying. Tell us about the coffee. Um, well, it's a coffee. <laughs> With a little bit of cream. I got this, like, coconut creamer. It tastes like a coffee with coconut creamer. I don't know what to tell you, my love. Durfs, thank you for the prime. Can I chew on the cables in your brain? <laughs> you, Funny that you think there's things in my brain. In my brain is an empty space. And in that empty space, there is one big wheel. And in that wheel is one Momo running. And then you all take turns being the Momo running in the wheel in my brain. Actually, maybe next to the wheel, there's other Momos, like, resting. But basically, it's like one of those permanent loops where, like, a Momo gets on the wheel, runs, gets off the wheel, goes outside, goes around, goes back on the wheel, runs, goes out, and... <laughs> uh, Dill, so we have two coffee machines. One is just an espresso, so you put a capsule, press a button, bing, bang, boom. And another one is a cheaper Nespresso machine for like a larger cup of coffee. I think it's like a Keurig. So same thing. You just put in a, a, a thing and you go bing, bam, boom, and you get a coffee. It's nothing fancy like that. Diz, thank you so much for subscribing. When Zen and Melware fight, whose side are you on? Shit. It's kind of hard because Zen is the protagonist, right? And malware is infecting everybody. I love evil so much. But I also love good. So I don't know. Wait, what is this? <laughs> Top Helldivers 2 streamers in March? And there's Mouse, me, and Zen? What is this? Also, <laughs> I have done like a tenth of what of what uh, of what Pirate Software does, even less, like a twelfth. But still, that's kind of crazy. Let's go! Oh, Pirate Software is on there. He's the first one at one point one five million. Cool! Hell yeah! I can't believe I'm a top ten somewhere. That's crazy. I think that's my first top ten. Wow. You know what's crazy, too? I only played the Helldivers like a few times as well. That's the crazy part. Huh? I feel like I only played a little bit of, of, of Helldivers. I didn't even play that much. Can somebody see how much Helldivers? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, it shows that I've only streamed 22 hours. Okay, okay. It actually shows that I've only streamed 22 hours. See? It actually shows it. It shows that I only streamed 22 hours. Zen only streamed 27 hours, though. And she's... That's crazy. Yeah, sorry. I did say my coffee didn't kick in yet. Oh, my God. Is this going to be the start of me taking over lists? This is it, everybody. We got to do this. I'm sending this to my assistant. I'm sending this to my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm happy. Oh, my goodness. I mean, not that it matters. Like, you know, it doesn't matter where I am on any chart. It's just kind of cool to be like, wow. I think sometimes I forget. Oh yeah, it only takes um 
I think it takes into account minutes watched. So obviously, the bigger streamer you are, the more minutes you have watched, right? Based on hours watched, yes. So if I was streaming for 10 hours with 100k viewers, I would be way higher on the list because it, it like it counts for hours watched. Um, which again, the more hours you have watched is usually the more viewership you have, right? Like that all correlates. I think sometimes I forget that yeah, sometimes on Twitch, depending where I am, like I could be, I could be pretty popular. <laughs> I think I forget that sometimes on, on the Twitch television. Mm. Watch. Damn. Yeah, th th things don't have to matter to be meaningful. That's basically it. Like, does it matter if I have a certain amount of hours watched in a game? Does it matter? No, 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 no. But it's just... I guess it just kind of hit me today, like, wow. Um, you know, the craziest part to me, too, is looking at this list and seeing Zentreya and Mouse, right? And Pirate Software, who I think are really big popular streamers. I don't really know Russian Badger, but I know of him because of um, Heavenly. He's a big YouTuber, right? Like, Sheriff Eli, I think that's also a pretty big streamer. Like, seeing um, Gathalian, right? He's been forever on, on Twitch and Facebook and stuff. So seeing like my name around other big names kind of blows my mind. But also like, yeah, I'm also, you know, a a, a streamer who has a little bit of, of, uh, yeah. TV is the country code top level domain for Tuvalu. I actually know that, Leon, but I still really love saying Twitch television. Although I should start saying Twitch.Tuvalu. Thank you for the bits accept the achievement it's really really cool it's 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 really cool it's really awesome it's uh like i said it's just sometimes a reminder of like oh yeah <laughs> it, it it always catches me off guard it it really does oh my goodness it really does catch me off guard i did a thing it's true and you all watch me do it Tess, I, I, I love their streams. I actually, um, I've been actually recommending their streams to a lot of my friends that always tell me like they, they want chatting streams of like kind of older chatting streams where it, you know, maybe it's not just sex jokes and things like that. And don't get me wrong. I am not above or below a sex joke or two, right? Listen. Hmm. But uh, I, I usually recommend pirate software for, for folks who are a little bit older and are looking to get into watching Twitch streams and things like that. Giga has the fecal funny. Elaborate. Are you saying she's stinky poopy jokes? Are you saying her jokes are stinky poopy? What does that mean? She does love toilet humor. Our Giga. Our sweet Giga. I love her so much. When will she be released from the clutches of, of, um, of, uh, what is it called? When will she be released from the clutches of Grand Theft Auto? When? You know what's crazy? I feel like the first time GTA popped off, it lasted a while. But then every time it would re-pop off, it wasn't that long. And now, it's still lasting. How is it still lasting, huh? Hmm? Give me Giga back! Please! Give her back. Please give her back. I'm begging. Oh, I guess it is kind of like Minecraft. You're right. 
Giga is in a better place now. I miss her. There's only Gigi Gambino. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Fida. I mean, in all, in all, in all honesty, um, selfishly, as a friend and coworker, I miss her a little bit. But from a business point of view, and as her friend and coworker, I'm cheering her on. You know, you're doing something that you're having a lot of fun with and it's growing your business and you're happy. That's I'm happy for you. That's also why I'm not inviting her to too many things because I don't want her to uh, to feel like, you know, she she kind of had, you know, if she hasn't collab with me in a little bit and I invite her to a collab, I feel like she might feel. And yet, this is me projecting, but I'm placing myself in her shoes. She'd probably feel like she kind of has to accept because we haven't collabed in a little bit. Right. But I don't want that because I want her to focus on the thing that makes her happy, on the thing that's making her channel grow, on the things that's doing good for her. I'll always be here. I'm not going anywhere. I hung out with her last night. We're good. You can be really close friends with people, close co-workers with people, and still not do a lot of collabs together. And that's okay. Still gonna miss her. Ugh. Are you crying at the shrimp? What is that? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know we only need to ask, but at the same time, it, you know, I, I want her to focus on her stuff as well. I really, really do. I really want her to focus on her stuff and, and do her stuff. Yeah, I think so too. If you're really good friends with somebody, you don't need the constant attention, which is, again, this is, again, another reason why the podcast is there. It just. I am that brand of people or breed of people and space cockroaches. I like working with my friends. I do not recommend working with every single friend. You cannot work with every single friend. You cannot work with every single friend in every kind of place. That is not possible. Um, and, and sorry, this is going to be kind of a, a little, let, let's dive into it. So, you know people at a certain place. They're your friend. And then when you add other places where you know them, that's where the tensions can mount. So, for example, let's say Mint and I live together, right? Now we're we're not just judging each other and we, we don't only have friction in our friendship. Now it's also in our home and then we work together. Imagine. So now, for example, I can be upset that she didn't do the dishes and take it out in our friendship and take it out in our work. So every time you add layers onto this kind of stuff, it just gets a little bit more convoluted and it's easier for things to break and it's easier for things to kind of snag and get pulled at. So this is why you can have a really great friendship, start working together, see parts of that person. Maybe they're not really, really fun to work with. And you're like, oh, you know, maybe they're lazy. I had that before when I worked in a restaurant where some people I was pretty good friends with. And then when we worked at a restaurant, they just were lazy at the restaurant. And it kind of changed my opinion of them a little bit because I was like, man, I like working hard. Why aren't you working hard? And then we have to share tips. Screw you. <laughs> and then when you add again the layer that we're in front of an audience sometimes this audience tends to kind of dissect our relationships which is fine right I completely get it so my end goal in all friendships <laughs> is to work together <laughs> no not to work together. it's not true that it's my end goal in all friendships but it's really rare that you have a friend that you vibe so good with that you can work together and you can be friends together. Just like it's really hard to find a friend that you vibe really good with that you can live together, right? Like it, it, it is hard. I just, what what is the word when you're like attached to somebody all the time? I'm attention needy. I don't know how to call it. I just, I need... I need the closeness. I'm clingy. I'm clingy. I'm codependent. Yes. 
I'm codependent. <laughs> I'm very independent, but I'm also very codependent. <laughs> I'm adhesive, exactly. Yeah, um, I'm clingy. I'm clingy. Let's 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 keep it at clingy. Uh, I'm clingy. I'm definitely clingy. <laughs> um, so that is also another reason why you know for the podcast it's really exciting because now. I basically have more excuses to be clingy with my friend and it's just, you know, it's easier to just keep in touch and then hang out and do stuff. So, yeah. But I think it's okay. You're not, you can't work with every single friend just like you can't live with every single friend. Believe me, when I was younger, I would meet a friend and we'd have a great time, her and I, and then when my apartment lease would be up or hers, we'd be like, yes, let's move in together. Now, forget it. I'm not moving in with anybody. Huh. I'm living alone forever or with my family. That's it. I've lived with enough people. We don't got to live together. And I, I'm kind of getting in that way with my work. Not in a bad place, but I can talk to somebody and think they're really, really fun. But maybe, maybe just work-wise, we don't really vibe. And that's okay. It doesn't mean they're bad or I'm bad. And then there's also the problem of maybe maybe we have really good vibes, but maybe our schedules don't align, right? If somebody streams at 6 a.m. and I stream at 6 p.m., forget it. I'm not going to wake up mega early just for the collab, and I don't think you should stay up very late just for the collab. So sometimes I'm collabing a lot with people because they just fit in that collab time. If Bricky started his streams at 3 a.m., forget it. I'm never collabing with him, you know? <laughs> like... It doesn't mean that he's a bad guy. It's just, it just doesn't fit. So. I'm sorry, Mr. Cavill, your secret wife doesn't want to live with you. I think I drive him insane. Not, not to be parasocial with Mr. Cavill, but I think I drive him insane. I, I think I'd need like my own, you know, my own room in his mega mansion. I'm doing great, Mad. You're in luck. You must be in luck today because tomorrow and Saturday I'm playing Mechanicus. Um, when I go on trips with people, you know what Onigiri told me? Um, so when I, I stayed with Onigiri for, initially I was supposed to stay with her, I think for 10 days. And I ended up staying with her, I think, for 13 days. I asked her to stay a little longer. And at the end of the trip, I apologized. I said, hey, I just want to say, you are incredible for having let me stay that long. I think next time I'm going to get, I'm going to come stay at your house at first. We can do a lot of work. We can hang out. And then I'll probably get a hotel just because I feel like I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in your space. I'm in your space for so long. And I just feel like I... You know, like, for example, I'd, I'd walk out and like Oni Bro would be doing something like working out or this. And I just feel like I'm in, I'm in, you know, their space. And uh, she told me, she goes, Matara, you have been so independent. She's like, most days I wake up, you're not even home. <laughs> you're not even home. You come back, you know, you invite us to places, but still. And she said that I was one of the most independent guests that she's had. But I promise you, I was the least independent I had been on a trip. I felt that I was not very independent while on this trip because um, I it was just a very like strange time and I was going through a lot of things. And also a lot of my plans and Onigiri's plans kind of aligned because I was doing collabs at her house or she had a little potluck dinner at her house or I invited, you know, like I would invite her to places where I was. So she told me that I was the most independent, but I was actually <laughs> the least independent I've ever been. <laughs> the only time that I really had her like take care of me was the time where I um, had food poisoning. So the day that I had food poisoning, I puked in the middle of the night, which you know she didn't know about. I just puked in the middle of the night. I drank my little water. I drank my little jelly. And then I puked in the morning. And then in the morning, I asked her if she could get me medicine. And she also said that she was going to make something if there's anything I wanted. And I said, would you mind making me kanji? 
which for anybody that doesn't know, it's not very hard to make. It just takes a little while. You just kind of have to uh, keep boiling the cooked rice so that it gets kind of um, like starts uh, the starch kind of starts breaking apart and it becomes almost like a stew. Um, so and then just so we're clear, I was puking in the morning and then we still ended up going out that day to meet up with my friend because we were going to a maid cafe and I wanted I wanted Kami and Onigiri and my friends to, to meet each other. Yeah, it's like a rice porridge. That was the only day where I really felt like I kind of had her take care of me. But I couldn't get out of bed for a while. <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed for a while, so. Yeah. She did tell me that, like, in the past when she's had people stay over, she would have to walk them to the kombini. And I did actually make this mistake a few times. I needed, the first two days, I needed Oni Bro to come outside. So basically, when I was walking back to where she lives, I needed Oni Bro to kind of walk outside to get me right on their street because I forgot what house it is. In my defense, the first night, I ran out of the house and into an Uber and I didn't really check where we were going because I was running late. Next time, I left in the morning and I and I, I looked at a sign. Sorry, I think next time I left in the morning before the sun rose. So the sign had a light on it. And then when I came back during the day, there was no light. So I asked Oni Bro to come out just so I, I could confirm that it was that. And I also felt like that wasn't independent of me. But for them, they're like, no, nah, you were great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm very independent. I'm I'm extremely extremely independent. And even when it came to like places to eat, what do you want to eat? I'm like, oh, I know what I want to eat. I know where I want to go. I know what I want to eat. I know what I want to do. I know where we're going. I know what I want to see. It's both, Icarus. It's both. But yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is funny. If they get a bigger place and ask me to move in with them, I'm like 95% yes. <laughs> so hurry up, Zentrea. You better snap me up and marry me and move me to Texas, okay? Or I'm going to move to Japan. <laughs> hurry up, Zentrea. I want to eat your tacos and walk your dogs. Or, or I'm just going to move away. Yeah, Zed, time is ticking. Time is ticking, Zentrea. <laughs> Hurry up, Zen. <laughs> you better move me. You better move me to Texas or I'm moving. Do I have any children? You're looking at them. You're looking at all my children. Everywhere in the chat where your eyes fall are my children, my momos. My some of them are grown up, some of them are a little youthful, but that's okay. There are momos. I thought a few minutes ago you said you're never moving in with anybody. True, I did, but in my defense, I think, hmm. I think I could live with Giddy and Oni, bro. I think I could. I think I could. I'd love to. I don't know if they'd want to live with me, <laughs> but I'd love to live with them. <laughs> uh, I'd love to live with them. You know what I really want? I want to be there when Giddy does cooking streams. Every week, I'm going to be like, oh my god, Giri, you know what we should do? You should do a cooking stream and make pizza. Every week, every week, I'm going to be like, you should make a pizza from scratch. <laughs> every single week, I'll be like, mm, you know what you should do? Dumplings. Yes. Let's make dumplings on stream. <laughs> every single week. Every, every single week. I haven't yet henshin, but may maybe in the future. 
I'm just, oh man. You don't understand how great her house smells all the time. She's always making food. She's always making food. And I'm always so jealous. When I collab with her and she made food. And then at the end of the collab, she just gets to eat it. And I'm sitting here sad and alone without the food. Like, come on. What the heck? You don't want to live with Giri. You want to live and cook. Not just that. But if I live with Giri and Oni, bro, it's a live and cook and a live in tech support. Think about it. And I can just pay the tech support in, um, what is it called? In, in Whoppers. It's kind of, it's good value. It's real good value. It's real, real good value. I like it. <laughs> what the hell do I bring to the table? Other than my alcoholism, you know? What do I bring to the table? I know what I do bring. For real, for real. I make every stream a party. If she is cooking and I show up, I'll be like, Hey, everybody, if you give her five subs right now, I will kiss you. And then everybody starts gifting her subs and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I know, King. He actually, the day that he was on for the first time, I was there. He saw the bottoms of my flesh woman's pajamas. I also bring her momos to, to eat. Thank you, Ota. I appreciate it, darling. Was anybody there one of the first nights that I, I think it was the first night when I was there and I had the microphone and I was kind of pretending that we were on uh, Awesome Games Done Quick? Thank you so much. This $5 goes out to save the kids. Yes. This skip is for Starry Wars, Starry Wars. And remember, F Cancer, save the kids. I don't even do it that well. I don't do it that well, but it was... I have to show them. Patches, thank you for the gifted. This tip is to eat the momos. Remember, eat the momos. Greetings from Japan. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. I think a really cool concept... I, I've always wanted to live with a streamer. IW, thank you so much for the gifted. Actually, fun fact. This is like deep, deep flesh woman lore. I have lived with two streamer girls in the past. So, 12 plus years ago, I think, when I lived in LA, I had an apartment. And then I had a friend who was moving out. She was kind of in between apartments and things like that so she moved in for a little bit and she was a streamer friend is a big word she was a colleague she moved in and it was so it was so 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 stimulating to live with a streamer girl because every day she'd wake up and some days i'd be like you know i might take the day off and she's like i'm not i have this idea for stream i have this idea for stream and it really made me more like excited about my ideas and then after her, I live with another streamer who moved in from, I think she was living near the Bay Area and she moved down to LA. And now she lives in Vegas. But uh, with her, it was the same thing where we would kind of talk about our stream ideas or what kind of stuff we want to do. or And it was just so fun. But this was way back when, when we were much smaller. I think a few of them didn't even have partner at the time, but they were going for it. So I do wonder what it would feel like to live with a bigger streamer, but we'd both have to be like, you ha kind of have to make sure that there's no jealousy, there's no envy, and that you're not doing the exact same thing. Like something I really love and respect about Giri is she is way more creative than me. And she also has a skill that I do not have. So at some point, there kind of can't be that friction of what am I gonna be jealous that she makes pizza better than me? Yeah, of course. I never cook, you know, 
And for her, if she doesn't play games, like it, it, I feel like taking less frictions, it, you just need places where you won't have that friction and you need people that aren't very envious. So it's a lot of these things. And I think Giri could be great. I'm manifesting moving in with Giri. <laughs> Sushi, thank you for the six months. Also for the interview right here. Exclamation mark goon. No, I know pizza is easy to make. Trust me, I, I know how to cook. I just don't cook because I moved in with my family so they could cook for me. This morning, I had a wrap with lettuce and turkey. And by the way, that turkey's from April 1st. No, it's from the weekend. It's from like 31st or something. And I'm just going to eat turkey for the rest of the week. It's my protein. Thank you, Holy. You feel like it's better to live near people than live with them? I like living with people. I like living with people. But, you know, hmm. I really do miss living with people. Uh, a few years ago, I think, I think right before COVID, I was living with, I talked about them before. I was living with these like three people from, they all grew up in the same city, on the same small city. And uh, I moved in with them because um, the, lo the long story short is uh, my friend was supposed to move in. And then my friend had a sickness and he couldn't leave his country because um, they can leave their country. Sorry. Um, and then they had to get basically health care in their country because it was a rare cancer. And they needed somebody to take over the apartment. And I was actually looking for a new apartment. And I said, well, wait a second. If you're help I'm helping you find somebody for the apartment. Can I just take over your lease? And, you know, obviously I, I had already met some of those roommates, but I just didn't really know them. And then I met them again. We talked about it. You know, we agreed. And uh, it was it was a really, really fun living experience. And sometimes in the mornings, like we'd make coffee and just talk at each other. And sometimes they drive me crazy because they would leave one time. One girl. She repotted a plant on our kitchen table. I and, and the worst is she like left half the plant unpotted because she had to go and like get a haircut or something. So she just left like the dirt and the potted plant still on the kitchen table while she left. Another girl had a million plants. And I would like walk into the shower and there were plants hanging everywhere. And she would be like, yeah, it needs to drink water. It's thirsty. I'm like, you know who needs a shower? Me. Get your plants out of here. <laughs> oh, it was uh, sometimes, sometimes it was good times. Sometimes there was stuff that I was like, good times, good, good times. <laughs> oh. And the worst part, and this was like, it it didn't bother me, but it bothered me. Like, I don't, I don't know if it bothered me, but um, because the three of them were best friends from childhood, they would get into yelling fights. Like, think about it. If you aren't that close friends with somebody or maybe you're fl friends, but you have good communication, you can disagree and you can get mad at each other and you can walk away. They would yell the three of them at each other. And their rooms were much closer. My room was kind of further away from there. So their three rooms, they would just open their doors and like yell at each other. And I'd be like, this is nice. <laughs> this is this is great. <laughs> and then, you know, they'd say, hey, sorry, um, don't worry. Like, this isn't about you. We're not, you know, we don't want you to get involved. Don't worry. But then they would each independently come to me to try and tell me their their um part of it so i was like listen don't involve me don't all come to me secretly and tell me your side of the story because now i'm getting involved and i am not happy i do not want to be involved <laughs> you're mad because 12 years ago one of you kissed another's man that that i don't you guys were 13 i do not need to be involved oh boy Ah, <gasps> Yun, one of my roommates. So I live with two girls and a guy and he, 
love him to death. Like I, as a person, adore him, but I would never live with him again. Just, just because he was a little messy. No, I'm just giving you an example, like 12 years ago. Like, you know what I mean? Some of their arguments were from 12 years ago. So, so he amazing, great, so funny, so, so funny. He always had these dramatic stories because he would always be on like, he'd be like, this is it. I'm focusing on myself. No more men. Next night, he's like, I met these three guys at the bar. They're married, but I'm now in a relationship with both of them at the same time, but then they don't know. And I'm like, hey, live your life, King. <laughs> I'm living vicariously through you. Uh, so anyway, he, every time we would run out of cups or cutlery, we would knock at his door and in his room would just be every single cup in the house, every single fork in the house, every single knife in the house. And I had a few things where I was like, look, please do me a favor. Like, do not take this one cup. Like, use any cup, but like this one cup, don't use it. These like wine, these two wine glasses, don't use them. No, 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 no. And he would be like, I didn't use them. And then we'd go into his room and my cup would be there. Be like, you lied. You told me you didn't drink out of my cup, but you did. Which again, not really a big deal. But if I have a favorite cup, it's my one, my one cup. Come on. Don't drink from my one cup. I have one cup. <laughs> it was really, really funny. Um... It was really, really funny. And like I said, it it, it it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh but I definitely don't think I'd I'd be able to live with with people I don't really know that well ever again. I think I'm too paranoid now. I think I'm too it's also kind of hard to um read. I'm gonna give you a ban, my darling. Your last comment was who are your favorite drama tubers, baby? Please. Please, this is not the space. We're trying to have a very cozy and 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 fun time. I was, you know, I ignored you once, but second time it's a ban. Get the fuck out. When you lead with that question, it's uh, you know, exciting. Anyway, um, where were we? What he say? Don't worry about it. If you're asking questions, you're next. <laughs> the dictatorship in here. What happened? If you keep asking, you're gonna be next. Me, I want it to be cozy and invited and kind. Also me, if you speak, I ban you. <laughs> if you speak again. What did he say? He said, watch the podcast. Exclamation mark podcast. He said, watch Mint's debut. Well, I don't know if it's really a debut, but you know what I mean? Watch Mint's YouTube tonight at 7 p.m. That is what he says. Her return karaoke. That is what he said. Hell yeah, fail. Next episode next Monday. Stupid bunny, now you know. We started the podcast and new episodes every Monday. Hi, Maris. Thank you for the six months. Can't wait for the podcast. It's already out. First episode is already out. And uh, first episode is already out. And then uh, new episodes every Monday. So next episode this coming Monday. It's exciting. It's exciting. Tonight is in five hours. Yep, 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 yep. The weeks are so long you need a new episode. I'm sorry, but that's also kind of the best part about podcasts is now it's like your weekly anime, right? It's your weekly anime and you're excited for it. Gule, I promise you, we already recorded episode two yesterday. I laughed my ass off. She's back, baby. She is so good. She is just, oh, she made me laugh so much. You kind of hate waiting one week. I'm sorry. Wait, but like at the same time, we need things to happen in a week to talk about them, right? We kind of need things to happen to talk about them. Otherwise, well, what are we, you know. I'm not watching weekly anime at the moment, unfortunately. I don't have time. Yeah, we did Millennia. It didn't really bother me. It was fun. 
it does make the wait more exciting. If you want a daily podcast, if you want a daily podcast, here it is. Watch my stream. Maybe not daily, daily, but still, you know. You have here. You have me here. Hello? Hello? I'm here. I am here. If you want to watch more stuff. What if I want a weekly podcast? Say to watch on Mondays. Say no more. Exclamation mark podcast. <laughs> Uh, where were we before this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, don't worry about it, Golf. Oh, yeah, we were talking about, um, I'm telling you, already episode two. Episode two already. The energy's there, baby. The energy's there. She caught me off guard with so, so, so many things. Oh, my goodness. Oh, What? What is a testim? Я работаю с вашим тестем и хотел бы знать, если способен познакомиться с вами более лично. Нет. Нет. What's a testim? Test is father-in-law. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, because you don't, because first of all, he's, he's retired. <laughs> That's really funny. I mean, shoot your shot, King. Sorry for the worst she could say is no, right? <laughs> it was really funny. It was like, it was written in like this English sized version of Russian. And it said, uh, hello, I work with your, and then they said, I guess, stepfather, but I just didn't understand the word because it was written in this anglicized Russian. Uh, and I would love to meet you more intimately, I guess is the word, right? More uh, personally or more intimate. <laughs> nah, baby, nah. <laughs> nah, not stepfather, father-in-law. Well, father-in-law is what then? It, what is father-in-law? You mean like Henry Cavill's father? Is that what it is? You work with Mr. Cavill's father? My husband's father. Again, my husband doesn't exist. Father-in-law would be my spouse's husband. What? See, it's so basically, my wife's husband. You work with Zentreya's father? These stories are not leading up to a good conclusion here. Confusing Riz. <laughs> or lying Riz, right? Your wife's husband is you. <laughs> I'm the husband. <laughs> we are playing Crusader Kings or flirting in Twitch chat. I don't know. A lie would make more sense. What is wife's husband in English? Wife's husband. Wife's husband. <laughs> yeah, that, that was very funny. I, I'm sorry. I, I do think it's always very funny when people try to try to shoot, you know, Hello, I would love to. This is my first time chatting in your stream, but I would love to get to know you more intimately. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you want me to lay my eggs inside of you and be a vessel for more momos to be birthed? You got to get picked for that. I have to pick you. I have to select you. I have to select you to be a worthy sacrifice. For the birthing of Momos.
We've been trying to reach you about your car. Hey, Matara, this is the government. How are those taxes coming along? Is egg laying intimate? I guess you'll have to be, I guess you can find out if you, if you. <laughs> um, I have, I have a sentence I really like to use. It's very silly, but I love it. Um, because as, as you all may know, I like, I like to do a little bit of, I don't really anymore, but I, I used to like to gamble a little bit. And usually if it's late at night and you don't know where to go, you and your friends end up going to the casino. And at the casino, if a man wants to approach you, they'll usually use this line, basically. So often, for some reason, if you're playing poker, you're playing blackjack, it doesn't matter. Men will say something like, if you play your cards right, I could buy you a drink. That's, you know, so my answer always, 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 always is just, I fold. That's it. You know, you don't got to say anything else. It's just, hey, you know, if you play your cards right, I can buy you a drink. I fold. <laughs> so anytime, you know, I, I thought of that because I was going to say, if you play your cards right, you could be selected to be uh, to be a sacrifice. Uh, but instead, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you need not every casino, Dalshal, not every casino. We were checking you from, a, me and my wife were checking you out from across the room. <laughs> and we really dig your vibe. How do you even come back from that? It is funny. That being said, all, all jokes aside, if, if, if that person recovers from that line very well, it's a good sign. If you tell somebody, I fold, and then they laugh and they go, you know what? I get it. My lines suck. How are you? I'm blank. That's a perfect recovery. That's a perfect recovery. And then you can kind of tell that they have a sense of humor, that they don't take themselves too seriously. They don't take themselves too seriously. You know, if they're like, ah, you got me. Yeah, my line's shit. I'm sorry. I really did not think it was going to work. But hey, how are you? This is very strange. Who is this? I'm just gonna, I'm just going to uh, delete this. This is very strange. I'm just gonna delete this person. I don't know who. <laughs> who or what, but I don't even know what half of that means. But anytime people start talking about family or anything like that, I'm never going to um, tolerate it. Just so you're aware. I'm never, I'm never going to tolerate it because I... That is one thing I do not take as a joke is is talking about my family ever. Like it's all jokes on the Internet. It's all jokes. It's all fun. But please, not even as a joke. Um, please, not even as a joke. That is one thing that I, I you know, I take very seriously because I, um, you know, I have moved with my family. And uh, even if you're kind of joking and you're like, oh, I think I saw your flesh mother on the street here in this. Ugh. Ugh. It, 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 it like it gives me the, the creeps. I think it's one thing if people talk about me, but if they talk about anybody else, it, it like. Ooh. Anyway, um, let's 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 rewind. Let's, you know. Let's rewind and get back to it. I recently saw a pink cockroach. <gasps> How did you know? It was me. How did you know? Let's do. Let's do the time warp again. How did you know? It was me. I was I was spying on you. I was looking at you. I was spying on you and I was looking at you. Mm-hmm. 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 I squashed your bug, mother. My mother's not a bug. She's a woman. 
all night I've been getting snake eyes, but I only got eyes for you. <sighs> I just think the best pickup line is not a pickup line. Is that bad? I think the best pickup line is not a pickup line. You just kind of have to talk to them a little bit without, you know, you have to accept that talking. Okay. I think you just have to accept that when you talk to another person, whether it's a man, a woman, anybody, that it might not lead to dating and romance and, you know, intercourse. And that's okay. And that's okay. Like, you just kind of have to understand. You don't just say a line and then it leads to intercourse, right? So I think the best way is just to make light conversation, but be okay with the fact that it might not go anywhere, right? Uh, let's say you're sitting next to somebody at a restaurant and they order something. You look over and you go, by the way, is that good? Do you recommend it? And maybe they'll talk to you a bit more and maybe they won't. And that's okay. And that's okay. That's fine. You know? It, it, I think you just kind of have to show people that you're open and you're available and you're there to talk. But at the same time, not necessarily. Let's say you go to a coffee shop and somebody's reading a book. You can come up to them and be like, by the way, it, you know, don't lie to them. Don't be like, by the way, love the book, love reading it. You know, what part are you at? But you've never read the book. Don't say that because then if they find out you're lying. But let's say you haven't read the book. You can come up to them and be like, hey, I've actually heard good things about this book. How do you genuinely feel about this? And then they might talk to you a little bit, but they but might stop talking to you after a bit. And that's okay. You know, sit not too far away. And if they want to talk to you, they will. A spoil the book. Dumbledore dies on page 608 of the sixth book. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, Great book, by the way. I wrote it. Meanwhile, you did not write it. The author's uh, the author's picture is on the um, the um, it's on the what's it called? Um, on the jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, like some guy comes up to you. Hey, I wrote the book. Meanwhile, like in the in the inside flap, it's just a lady that wrote the book. <laughs> When is Warhammer painting soon? Stream soon, TM. It's a hey, I love that book. I wrote it. <laughs> it's a crossword. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the biggest thing with with like pickup lines and things like that. It's just you kind of talk to people, and uh, the more you know, if you seem approachable and fun, I think the biggest thing about talking to people. Okay, this is, this is, I don't think I do this on purpose. I'm just very independent. But if I go to places alone, I'll end up making friends, whether it's girls or guys. It, it just usually works like that. I think it's because I don't seem like I need to be their friend to have a good time. So for example, I go to a coffee shop. There's girls next to me. I'm like, oh, by the way, how are you liking the mimosa? Is it good? Is it like the right amount? Okay, I'm going to get one. And then... I go back to my own stuff. I don't keep talking to them. I think like not appearing desperate is the wrong word, but I, I really feel like you just kind of have to be doing your own thing. Mama extravert, chut chut. Mass, love your name as usual. Thank you for the six months. Yeah, if you kind of show people that you're clingy and you're uh, all that stuff, um, if you show people that you're clingy and then all that stuff, it might get a little bit weird. But, um, yeah. Give me one second. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta confirm that I'm still meeting because one of my managers said no to our meeting today. So I gotta make sure the other one is still in. Uh, give me one second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 
What is? <laughs> Weirdos around the corner. Thank you for the gifted. <laughs> oh, I seen your reels on YouTube, and I fucking hate you. I just, I saw that comment and then I saw weirdos around the corner. Completely different person, by the way, gifting subs. You are amazing. But I was like, wow, yeah, there really are weirdos around the corner. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know what's up today. It's getting it's getting up. a little bit of children round up on the internet. <laughs> Zenti, keep doing your work. The reels are working. The children it's are angry. The children hate hate us we're doing something right the children hate us yes <laughs> that's such a funny call it genuinely made me made me laugh like it it's oh it, it genuinely brought joy joy in my life code aurora thank you for the gifted lich thank you so much for the gifted <laughs> i love it i love it i <laughs> There, there was that was a really good comment we had another really good comment today too it was like oh it was like hey you look fucking ugly <laughs> and it's like ma'am i'm a pink cockroach on the internet <laughs> i'm a pink cockroach on the internet <laughs> Wow, so you hate all anime, huh? <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I love that for us. I absolutely love that for us. I'm having so much fun with the first time chatters today. Oh. Alistair, we're talking about first time chatters. You have a first time message, but I, I can see your message is not bad. <laughs> After a few weeks of becoming interested in the VTubing scene, I wanted to drop in and say how much I respect your style and humor. Thank you. Everyone that I've watched from Pirate Software to Iron Mouse to the Brick himself always seem to consider you the mature one, TM. Thank you. Thanks for taking so many people under your wing. It truly means a lot to so many people. You're awesome. Thank you, Alistair. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I'm sorry, you called me mature and I'm here making fun of... I'm not making fun. I'm just laughing that somebody woke up and we're like, I'm going to tell this VTuber. <laughs> hey, by the way, hate your reels. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for a good, a good, kind first message. You're the mature one, Mata. It's just that the bar is real low. The bar is in hell. What do I plan to peer pressure Bricky into next? Actually, he's peer pressuring me into something next. But I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil because that's for him to talk about. Uh he's peer pressuring me. Uh he's uh he's peer pressuring me into something. Um But yeah. Actually, I don't know if I, I should be talking about his private plans, but he reached out to me about like, he wants to organize a collab with some people without me. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. You should reach out to those people. He's kind of nervous because he like, you know, I tend to invite him a lot of places. I'm like, I think you should absolutely reach out to those people. I see you hate me. I see you detest me. I see you don't think I have enough. Um, I know, obviously I'm kidding, but seriously, I'm like, yeah. Spread your wings, my child, and fly. You are an ugly little, um, what is it called? An ugly little um, caterpillar. Turn into a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Break your cocoon, Bricky. Break it. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop on the like. <laughs> yeah. Go from an ugly duckling to a beautiful spawn. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. But yeah, again, I don't want to spoil his his plans. That's, you know, I only spoil my plans. I don't spoil other people's plans. Yeah, we'll see what we get up to. Uh, we'll see what we get up to. We'll see how it goes. I think in April, I really want to focus on number one, 
Um, I actually am. I'm, I'm trying to get a Amelie. I feel so, so bad. Amelie messaged me three times and I left her on red. I feel so awful. I messaged her back. We're actually thinking of doing a little like hags yapping with wine. And I also know that fruit absolutely adores Amelie. Give me a moment. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll see if fruit wants to. I just worry it might be too late for fruit. No, 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 doll. It's just that she messaged me when I was kind of in podcast prep. And I, I've just been so, so, so busy with the podcast prep that it, it, you know. Yeah, she's very understanding and, and she gets it, right? She's also, she's also very busy. So I get it. I get it. Um, oh my God, there was a hype train. Thank you so much. I didn't even realize. I'm so sorry. It doesn't always show me when the hype train happens for some reason. It's weird, the UI. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate you. What the heck? Mm. She really is the sweetest. Leela, she is so, so sweet. She is so, so kind. She is so, so nice. I know we've had this question a few times about guests. So I'm going to say it in English, then I'll translate it in Russian for you. We're, the problem with having guests is that there will always be people that won't be able... Like, if our podcast was permanent guests is obvious right we can get a lot of guests on it could be fun but the podcast i think is only until september maybe even earlier if we start having guests on we have no time to do our own episodes and i have this fear for example if we do the podcast and let's say i interview three of these shoujo girls right oh why did you not interview the other eight what's wrong with you oh wait we're 11 with me so the other seven what's wrong with you Oh, you don't like them as much as the other ones. You know, because we have a limited amount of episodes, it's just easier to say no guests. But we have each one person in our mind who's our dream guest. And I think each of us is willing to make an exception for that guest. <laughs> to give you an idea before you start speculating my dream guest is Kojima. So, and I don't speak Japanese. So, like, hey, don't be speculating. It's nobody on the Twitch or the YouTubes. It's it's like, you know, my dream guest is gacked. So, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, don't start thinking, oh, oh, okay. Well, you're going to have Iron Mouse. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Чтобы тебе ответить, нет, скорее всего, у нас не будет гостей на подкасте, потому что подкаст не навсегда, подкаст только на несколько месяцев. Если, например, мы только будем делать интервью с тремя девочки, девочек из Вишоджо, то люди будут говорить, а, а где остальные девочки из Вишоджо? Ты их что, не любишь? Па -па 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 -па. So, не будет. Sorry. Easier that way. Plus, we just have so much stuff to talk about. We just have so much stuff to talk about. Dal, how are you going to do it? Are you going to light? I just I just asked Dal, hey, Dal, how are you going to get Kojima on the podcast? And it's you making a summoning ritual with all your uh, Death Stranding and Metal Gear. How do you say? Paraphernalia? Or is that only when it comes to like... Now say it in French. Merde! Alors, on n'aura pas d'invité sur le podcast. Pourquoi? Parce que le podcast n'est pas permanent. Si on avait un podcast permanent... On pourrait avoir des invités, mais comme le podcast, il va juste exister pendant quelques mois. Si, par exemple, j'ai trois filles de Vishojo sur le podcast, j'ai peur que les gens vont dire « Merde, elle n'aime pas ses autres filles puisqu'elle a seulement trois filles sur le podcast. Pourquoi pas les autres? » Et c'est beaucoup plus facile de juste pas avoir d'invités. On a trop de trucs à se dire, moi et Mint. Alors, pas d'invités. <rire> pas d'invités. <laughs> you can tell I'm like annoyed. 
I'm not for real, for real annoyed. Just so we're clear. I'm not, I'm not for real annoyed. I'm just, you know, I'm playing it up where I'm like, merde. Mais zut alors. No, no, no. Do not email him, please. Let me email him. If your first thing, if your first order of business is I'm going to email him, don't do it. Let me email him first. <laughs> let, let me email him first. Please. Let me email him first. Now Klingon. Now in Momo. If I do it in binary, it's going to take way too long. <laughs> Did anybody get their Momo keychain, by the way? Because I know a lot of people got their desk mat from the comfy drop and they got their mug already. Have y'all gotten the keychains as well? No, not the keychains yet. Okay. I will ask staff to take a look at it. You didn't get the email yet. I'll ask staff to take a look at it just in case. Just in case. Um... I'll ask staff to take a look at it just in case. Uh, the order says preparing to ship. Oh, well, then I guess we wait a little bit, right? If it's preparing to ship, it's preparing to ship. Yes, Leela. So when... We're, we're moving stuff at the moment, as you can tell, because we have a new, you know, I, I don't have to tell you that something changed with our merch, but uh, something did change. I will be bringing back, hold on, I, I hear talking in the background, let me close the door. I went and go told them off for talking so loudly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will be bringing back the, 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 the mouse pad, uh, debut standee, keychain, and mug. Basically, the whole comfy drop and the debut standee. And we'll see. If y'all are really interested, maybe we can, you know, I, I have nothing against bringing back the debut poster, things like that. I think there's some merch that you should be able to buy whenever you want. I don't really think it's a big deal. Lorange, thank you for gifting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's a gift up. Yeah, if y'all are okay with it. The problem is, hmm, I think because we are changing merch providers, it's a gift up. I wonder if it is possible to bring back everything. Like, I wonder if it's going to be different it's quality. I don't know. Do I have any dream merch you want one day? I got it, genuinely. I think the Momo keychain is one of my dream merches because I love Sanrio stuff and I have so many Sanrio keychains. I have the Kirimichan keychain. I have my um, uh, Pom Pom Pudin keychain. So genuinely, the Momo plush is my dream and I got it. Um, I really think the mug and another one of mine that has been a dream for a really long time is the acrylic frame. The acrylic frame is absolutely like another thing. And eco, genuinely eco bag. I use eco bags all the time. So yeah, it's, uh, hmm. we'll see. We'll see as it goes. There's a lot of stuff that it would be really fun to make. But at the same time, I'm also aware that because I am not a Walmart or a Winners or a big store, we would have to put the price up a little bit. And frankly, it's expensive to have, you know, a $200 beanbag chair for you guys. It's expensive to have an 100 or, you know, even sometimes I'm seeing stuff where like sweaters are $90 or or joggers are $90. And it's 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 wild. It's a lot. And I <laughs> I am aware that 
you know, the economy is not doing too good. So. I also don't want to just release very expensive items and just kind of overwhelm you. Especially because I want to release future merch as well. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of like you slowly building up a collection. Ira, it also gets more expensive. I hope you guys understand it. But basically, it gets expensive because the reason some merch is cheap is because you can get like 10,000 t-shirts, right? If you are winners or Walmart or whatever that is or Target, Target. You can get 10,000 stickers, 10,000 things. And it's just not something that we can do. So sometimes when you sell out merch stuff, if you are getting items, let's say you get 200 of an item, they might cost $5 to make. If you get 1,000 of an item, they might cost $4 to make. And a lot of those really big companies, the reason that they have stuff so cheap is because they're getting 10,000 of an item, which is something that we just cannot really do. Uh, unfortunately, right? It's just not... But, yeah, I am learning a lot. I am learning a lot about, like, for example, I, I am still surprised just how much it costs to manufacture items. I genuinely thought items cost so much less to manufacture. And I remember when I used to look at prices of stuff, I remember thinking, this is, like, that's crazy. Why is the price like that? Trust me, the price is, the price is like that. The price is like that. So, okay, I'm going to say this. I don't, I don't think I'm not allowed to say this because I don't, you know, but if I am not allowed to say this, bonk me, we showed you later. I'm sorry. So I actually wanted the socks to be a little bit cheaper. Um, but our cost of making the socks, making the socks with the pattern that we have on, with the colors that we pick, blah, 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 ends up being, I think, 17 or $18. Which is insane. I thought socks were like a dollar or two or five. Right? Wouldn't you think socks are five dollars? Seven dollars? So even if I wanted to sell the socks at, 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 you know, fifteen dollars, I can't. <laughs> um, I did say that in the future, I want to be even more involved because I, if I, you know, if I had known that the socks were going to be that expensive, I would have changed a lot, a lot of things, I think. Um, so, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of stuff like that. So there is a few things where genuinely I'm keeping the price so low because I already have, you know, you guys already spoil me. Mint and I are already going to be doing great with the podcast, and we are. A lot of this merch is just, I want you to get cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's it's like I said, there's some stuff that really kind of shocked me with the pricing of it. Um, and I just, I, I wanted the socks to be even cheaper. But I was told, like, you can't. We If you make the socks cheaper, we are losing money. <laughs> like, you, you just can't. Which really caught me off guard. And there's a lot of stuff like that. That's why a lot of stuff costs so expensive. It's so, you know, a streamer can have a little bit of profit. But I, I will get even more involved because I just want to check. I just want to know a little bit more about this process. It's been really interesting. Yeah, Alano, that's what, that's another thing that we were told, right? Mm -hmm. The less you make, the more it costs. If you have pre-orders, things like that. Mm -hmm. The shipping prices are pretty low for North America. And I know that because staff gave me an estimate of the shipping prices. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've been a little bit of a ball buster. Um, I just never... I've just been very, very in tune with the stuff that you bring up to me. So I told staff, for example, in the future, I want to know how much shipping costs. And don't get me wrong. I am aware that shipping is expensive if you're not in the United States. I am aware shipping is expensive to Europe, to Asia. I am I am sorry. I apologize. But um, there had been something before where there was shipping on an item that was really expensive. 
And I had told, I had told staff, I said, look, in the future, I want to be made aware before, because I just think some of the, some of the shipping is kind of, you know, and this time they actually gave me an estimate of all the shipping. And it ended up being very, very like, you know, it was something I think like $10 for, for Canada and, and things like that. If I, I remember seeing, and it was not any, it wasn't like $35, $40, $50. And I thought, okay, okay. It just sucks because our staff is doing such a good job and so are the companies that we work with, right? And, and everyone is, you know, trying to make a little bit of a profit and I completely understand. And here I come in and I'm like, I want it cheaper. I want it $10 less. I want it $5 less. I want this to be a free gift. Previously, I was asking because I wanted to have these like really elaborate pins as a free gift. But to make them was like $9. And staff was explaining to me like, look, Mata, we love that you're so generous. We love, we love, 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 love that you want to give like an ornate, beautiful pin. But it costs us $9 to make it. And then if we give it for free, like it just, that's kind of insane. <laughs> That's a little crazy. We cannot be having these elaborate pins as a gift. <laughs> we love you, but... So I also kind of need to get realistic about it and learn that, uh, you know, at some point, if you guys want merch, you got to pay for it. People got to make their profit. The merch company has to make their profit. Everybody has to make their profit. And... Um, yeah, I just, it, you know, I gotta, I gotta understand. <laughs> Candace, thank you for the six months, my love. Yeah, Chams, exactly. And then the art for it too, right? So the art as well costs money. Um, a lot of times art for things can sometimes go like up to four figures, right? For certain things, especially because I am being charged uh, merchandising rights or commercial fees or things like that which completely I get it right artists make your money you deserve it so that can sometimes go up as well and now suddenly you're like oh what's going on here thank you swanky yeah this is definitely something that caught me off guard the production cost of everything because again for the company right like they have to make money as well the, the merch company has to make money as well. They're not just making us stuff for free at cost. And then I always worry about other people as well. So there's this, this idea for voice actors that if you go to like a comic con and voice actors start doing free meet and greets, it devalues other meet and greets. So then... I feel like if I price my merch too much lower than the price of merch for other people, then I'm kind of devaluing everyone's merch at the same time, right? If I'm kind of undercutting, I guess is the word. So then I'm also thinking, okay, well, if in average, when I've seen VTuber standees in North America, they tend to be $20 US. So if I start putting standees up for 12 or 13, it, it just feels like I'm devaluing everyone's standees. And, and, you know, for a lot of people, merch is a really big part of their profit. So I'm also kind of thinking about that solidarity. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff, but I'm loving it. I'm loving learning about it. I'm loving getting into it. And just believe me, even I used to think, oh my God, why is merch so expensive? But now that I've been involved with merch and now that i see the numbers and now that i get it yeah it's gotta be more expensive <laughs> it's gotta be more expensive it it i get it i get it i think that's what we did with the with the mint and matara standee so if you get the bundle you save five dollars right 
Um, and then I think it shows on the top free mint and Matara star summer sticker sheet because the sticker sheet was never meant to be for sale. Um, but we just cannot have it not on the website. And initially I was thinking just put it for a thousand dollars, but then somebody could get it and then it just causes, you know, so you save five dollars US if you buy both. So, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I did, Angel. Uh, we did that bundle and then, you know, it's still the free sticker for a gift and all that stuff. And you know what's funny? I worry about merch prices, but YouTuber merch prices are pretty expensive. I've seen like YouTuber merch prices and I've seen, you know, like um, the esports merch prices. They're kind of crazy. <laughs> They're kind of crazies. And I'm like, okay, well... At some point, maybe it's fine if if stuff is at the way that it is. Like yeah, some some of the some of the uh, what is it called? Some of the um, some of the uh, esport esport merch stuff is yeah YouTuber YouTuber merch is pretty expensive. Yeti, thank you for the six months. No, because we already did all that. Sure. Absolutely new light. I completely get it. That's why, again, I hope it does not sound like a criticism. Everybody can price their stuff however they want. And just so we're back to it, right? Rock bands. That was my next thing I was going to say. Because you know what? When the rock bands tour, they might not be making a lot of money. A lot of rock bands don't sell out these huge stadiums, right? And it's a smallish venue. They are paying a lot of money. They're on the road. They're paying, you know, people full-time wages, whether it's like the lights guy, this guy, ta -da 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 -da, the people who carry the bags. And a lot of times their merch is where they keep all the profit. So yeah, absolutely there. There, the technicians, exactly. Um, they need to have insurance, everything. Oh, yeah, it's it's one of those other things. And I always have to remember that you don't have to buy merch. At the end of the day, I'm never forcing you to buy merch. You I'm never, ever forcing you to buy merch. You never have to worry about it. You just can live your life, do your things. Exactly, Zodia. So I learned this because when I went to. I don't want to spoil too much because we're going to talk about this in the in the con either in the Metal Gear or the convention episode of the podcast. But I will give you a little. So when I went to Metal Gear convention, people would ask. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. I'm just remembering the memory and it's making me laugh. Um, so sometimes people would ask these actors, like, how did you get into the role? You know? And the actors would be like, some of them were, you know, they, they really like were telling them, guys, I felt the role. I got into it. I love this. Da, 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 da. Um, but then others were like, I got paid $500 25 years ago for this. I just did it. It's just a job. <laughs> and the reason I'm laughing is because like you could see the person's face completely drop. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry for laughing. It was like just that moment of realization, right? Like when they realize Santa Claus isn't real, that, yeah, for somebody, that job paid them the money that they did 25 years ago. And they did that. And, you know, it's fine. And that's how it happened. And they also explain how this is why they do meet and greets. And this is why they sign posters and prints. Because a lot. this is actually something about voice acting that started right now so if you play in a movie you will get residuals a lot of voice actors do not get residuals from games at least back in the time of like metal gear solid one metal gear solid two they did not get residuals so for a lot of people they got paid you know four hundred dollars that one time or three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars it was a job but now they're not touching any of that money they're not basking in any of the success and even though people are memeing and it's such a huge thing which is why when you go to those events and you get signed prints or anything, it can end up being, you know, like 40, 50, a hundred dollars. And, um, 
Yeah, but Giblix, that didn't exist back then. Just so we're clear, like that didn't exist back then. And this is exactly what they're talking about, that like they never. So for a lot of voice actors going to cons, going to Comic Con, signing prints, things like that is a big way that they make money. And uh, what did you think about Ronnie's story? I don't know. I never saw the game. Yeah, there was a lot of that at Metal Gear Con where they were like, how did you feel about this? They're like, I never knew. I just read the script. <laughs> it's listen. And at some point. I get it, right? You do not have to love every single project you've ever done. Sometimes it's just work. I'm sure I've hired a million artists who, you know, were like happy to work with you, excited to work with you, but also it's just work, right? They just did my commission. They drew the thing I asked them to draw. I paid them money. It's just business. And if you went to them and said, what emotions and feelings were you feeling when you designed I don't know, this product from AtariCon, they'd probably say, it was just work. Uh, it was just work. I just, uh, you know. Uh. Would I like to commission someone to paint my Harlequin models? I don't have Harlequin models yet, but maybe one day if I do decide, I will do my research and I will find somebody to commission. <laughs> I was feeling the money she paid me. <laughs> I was feeling a little less stressed out about next month's rent. Oh, email. I went to a dashboard confessional concert seven years ago. After every single song, they sang like three songs. After every single song, people just kept yelling, hands down. Hands down! Do the song! Play the... <laughs> because they have, like, one mega famous song called Hands Down. Um, Hands down, this is the best one I will ever remember. Always remember the, na, na, the stereo. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Uh, as you twirl something, hair in your fingers, and the... Time of the night when I realized the na, na, na moment we shared together. And I knew that you meant it, that you meant it. Basically, like very, you know, like early 2000s, mid 2000s. But <laughs> after the third song, <laughs> people just kept yelling, please sing that one song. Please sing that one song. That's it. <laughs> so I'm sure it's kind of the same way, right? Yeah, Elixir, it was not on the set list that night because you already know that's going to be the last song they play. That's going to be the last song they play. That's their big shebang. That's the song that, you know, everybody kind of came for. <laughs> I get it. And I also understand why. I remember reading an interview about no doubt a very very long time ago um so long story short Gwen Stefani was dating one of the guys in the band and he broke up with her and she said that like it kind of elevated her singing songwriting um as a musician it's pretty common to also not enjoy the one song you made anymore I completely get that because you could be on a completely completely other part of your life and I'm going there with this story so he, you know, I love this line because it goes so hard, but he said before on record where he broke her heart that night by breaking up with her, but she wrote, don't speak. She went home, she rewrote, don't speak, or she wrote it. And then every night on stage for years, she performed it and his heart, and she broke his heart over and over and over and over again. And at some point, right, if no doubt reunites, because I think they reunited not that long ago to re- to re um to retour imagine she's married with kids she's married with kids they're doing stuff and she's like all right don't speak i know just what you're saying like how do you even get back to that pain right how do you get back to that pain in your heart again that's the biggest thing like when she performed it back then she felt that pain how do you get that pain now i don't know for her but i I don't know if she feels that pain anymore. 
Oh, right. Wasn't, yeah, rumor. Is Fleetwa, um, what is that song where it's like, and you never none the sound of the woman that loves you. I don't know how the song goes, so I don't know where the pitch is. She feels the pain of the royalties. <laughs> uh, I do have to say, Wolf, that that is my, like, I don't know how real that line is because, you know, maybe it's for the interview, but God, that's such a good line. Oh, dog. It's, it's crazy to me with like Nine Inch Nails, right? Because for those that don't know, Nine Inch Nails have been pretty popular since the 80s. Pretty popular since the 80s. So, you know, it's like imagine Fall Out Boy singing, uh, not Fall Out, imagine, um, well, actually, I don't have to imagine. Didn't Blink-182 just redo a tour recently, right? In the car, I just can't wait to pick you up on our very first date. Is it cool if I hold your hand? Is it wrong if I think it's land a dance? Although that is ironic enough where I get it. But I guess if you sing songs about pain, like, how do you get back to that pain? Right? How do you get back to that pain? Zero, thank you so much for the gifted. Zero spending his dinero. Stub your toe really hard. Ah! I hurt myself today. Then you hit yourself again to see if I still feel. Focus on the prayer. <laughs> You're just walking on Legos <laughs> the whole concert. <laughs> You're just, <laughs> you can have it all. My empire of dirt. Oh, okay, wait. My meeting might be canceled tonight. Um, Tomorrow, let me check my schedule. Uh, yes, tomorrow works for me. It can work even better if we do it a little earlier than we usually do. Oh, we can party. We can hang out. We can party. You have such a good voice. Why aren't you a singer? Thank you. I'm I'm learning. Actually, I wanted to do a karaoke um, today, but then I saw that Mint is doing a karaoke. Let her have her karaoke. Let her sing her heart out. We'll probably do a karaoke next week. I've been rehearsing a little bit, and something that I think is really important with my next karaoke, I want to sing songs for the first time. So I want to have you guys recommend me some songs to sing on stream so that I don't over rehearse them because like you know head like a hole love that song right i could i could sing the head like a hole but um if you for example i think the other time somebody recommended barbie girl i don't sing barbie girl it's exciting to sing it because then i can tell how much my voice has improved how good i am at picking up a song quicker you know i want to hear depeche mud i sang them last time i sang a little bit of depeche mud last time I mean, it's probably going to have to be songs that are in my song program. I use Kata Fun. So it's going to have to be songs that are in my program. Would I sing in different languages? Probably not, because again, it's going to have to be in Kata Fun. And it's going to have to be a song that I know. So for example, it's really hard for me to sing a song in German. I don't know the song. I don't know German. Right? But if it's an English song, chances are, I like for example, you can ask me to sing, I don't know, like a Maroon 5 song that I don't really know. Because I've most likely heard it on the radio. Anyway, please don't recommend songs now. It's it's it does not matter because we're not singing right now. Bowling for soup. I don't know that many. I only know I think 1985 and Iran. I walk along the avenue. Okay, I will sing "Lips of an Angel." That that is a non-negotiable. I will sing "Lips of an Angel." Okay, Starry. I'm not even saying this to advertise the podcast. But watch the podcast episode two on Monday. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Watch episode two of the podcast on Monday. I'm not even kidding. We go into that. We go into that. 
I'm, I'm, I swear I'm not even doing this to advertise the podcast. It's like I can predict what the audience wants. <laughs> we know what you want. <laughs> Exclamation mark podcast. You know, New Light, yesterday we were talking about emo night and I was thinking of doing an emo night because you know what random song came in my head? Saying Sorry by Hawthorne Heights. Lurk, Lurk. Ruka, I actually sang Rise Against, I sang Ready to Fall, and I sang, um, what was the other song? I forget what, we sang that on a karaoke a little bit ago, and I hadn't sang Ready to Fall ever. I've only ever heard it, you know, 10 or so years ago, so. I don't know why, I remembered the other day, I was like, man, I should do an Imomo karaoke night. It'll be fun. I don't think I'd sing Ohio is for lovers because it's a little too, it's, it's, listen, I don't get embarrassed easy, but it's a little too cringe. <laughs> but saying sorry, I think is perfect. Same old sorry. Yes, I will be uploading those eventually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will be uploading. We will be on Spotify and Apple podcast probably by episode four. You'd have to look up the VOD. I don't know if um if the VOD Zenti, if you're around, do you remember if the VOD is up? I think sometimes we don't upload the karaoke VODs. The command podcast didn't work yet because somebody probably did it right before and it has a cooldown. So most likely somebody did the command and then you're gonna have to wait for next Monday's episode though, my love. Stacy's mom has got hold on. Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want and I've waited for so long. Stacy, can't you see? You're just not the girl for me. I also didn't warm up and I'm drinking cold beverages and a coffee. <laughs> You're going to have to wait for the karaoke stream. I know it might be wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Stacy, can I come over after school? Ma -na -na. We can hang around by the p -p 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 -pool. hang around. <laughs> Shield, in my defense, I only found out that gooning is a thing yesterday. I thought goon was just like a twerp or a hired gun, or like a guy, or a grunt. I had no idea what gooning was until Heavenly Father so kindly explained to me what gooning is. You still have a great voice. I've said it before, and every time I say it, people get a little mad at me in the stream, but please listen until the end. My voice is good, and that hard carries me in my singing. I have very good like i can hold notes for a long time i have good breath i have a good tone i have a like wide range but i have zero technique i do not remember pitch i am bad with pitch i like i have zero technique i've been improving in my singing i've been taking lessons i actually have to go back to taking my lessons since my trip um but I really think I'm one of those singers where I just sing loud and I sing rock songs. So it makes me sound more impressive. You know what I mean? If I actually sang a difficult to sing song, plus a lot of rock songs fit in my natural range. So it's easy. It's easy for me to do it. Like I kind of trick you all by singing fairly easy songs that fall into my range and everyone's like, wow, she's amazing. <laughs> but really my voice carries me more I have very bad technique and you can tell and I just have a lot of fun with it but in also my defense I never wanted to be a good singer I never thought I could even sing I thought I was tone deaf much to my surprise when I went to see a vocal coach and she's like girl you gotta my old co-workers they used to be like please promise me you are gonna take a lesson Please promise me you're going to go to a vocal teacher. They were right. They saw something inside me that I did not know was there. So they were right. And I think as I keep, as I keep, you know, improving and finding my voice, it's going to get better. No, 
that's exactly what I said, Bullseye. I said my voice is great, but I absolutely lack technique and I have really bad. I don't have bad hearing, but I have a really bad ear with music because I focus on the lyrics and I never focus on like the song. I never focus on the song. I'm always off pitch. But yeah. It's not imposter syndrome though. It's just the reality of it. I do not have the motivation to like, for example, when Fruit sings a song, she will rehearse the song 50 million times. And I'm like, all right, let's just hit it. Let's just, let's just, let's just, <laughs> let's just go with it. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. As the French say, sous <laughs> You know? Or something like that. Yeah, I, uh, and the reason I keep saying this is because, uh, my flesh mother, she went to a restaurant and this woman was singing and my flesh mother was like, all she did was sing really loud. These like same exact five notes in her songs and everybody loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's c'est la vie, but I love to say sous la vous. Thank you, Mick. But I think everybody has a good sounding voice. Genuinely, I think... Everybody has a good sounding voice when they sing. I've never listened to a person sing and thought, oh, that's not a good sounding voice. I've heard people speak songs, right? And that makes it maybe a little bit less pleasing. I heard people be off pitch, which, you know, makes it, I've heard me be off pitch. It really does zero. It really, really does. I think just singing more often. Thank you, Crimson. Thank you for the four months singing in the car i love singing when nobody is home because a lot of singing as well is trial and error so i've been singing some songs the other day and i've been singing them badly but it's fine because nobody's home to judge me nobody is home to judge me so we're good you know Only God can judge you. That's true. Thank you for that. <laughs> Repo, thank you so much for the gifted. Oh, tech. Oh, oh, tech. And then you get so embarrassed. <laughs> you get so embarrassed. Yeah, wasn't there a quote, Razar? I think it was from Adventure Time where it's like to get kind of okay at something, you got to suck at something. Um, and that that is kind of how it is with anything. Same thing with streaming. You know, to start streaming, you kind of have to start by sucking at streaming a little bit. And then you just get better and better. <laughs> My friend Zach thinks you're pretty. Thanks. Tell Zach I'm going to eat him. <laughs> Tell Zach I'm gonna I'm gonna cannibalize him. <laughs> Thanks. Repozide, thank you for another gifted. Did I suck when I started streaming? I gotta be honest with you. I still think I Okay. This is this is a very loaded question. In singing, when somebody quote unquote sucks is when they're not hitting the notes, is when they are not on rhythm, when they are, you know, that kind of stuff. But somebody could be an average singer, but still sing a song very beautifully, correct? We can kind of judge that. In streaming, I don't think that applies at all because... I, for example, don't think I'm very funny. I don't think I'm, oh, oh, no, I'm funny and I'm witty. But then when I'm around people like Heavenly Father, oh, man, forget it. <laughs> I'm not funny, I'm not witty, right? Uh, but just because you do a stream where you don't make a lot of jokes doesn't make you a bad streamer. You could have a stream where you are just cozy and softly talking to people. Or maybe if you guys saw, I keep mentioning this, but there was a VTuber that just went uh, went viral because they were doing a history lesson. They're a teacher doing a history lesson. 
You don't have to be funny. You don't have to be cozy. You're still doing a good stream, right? I think when it comes to streaming, just because, so for example, I don't watch Kai Sinat, right? And, and when I was a lot younger, I would assume that the things I don't watch and the things I don't like are quote unquote bad content. Now I can understand clearly he's doing something amazing. Clearly he's engaging his audience. Clearly he's mega successful. Clearly he's so hardworking. It's just not for me. So there's not really a thing as like good content, bad content. Everything is content. It just depends which audience likes it and who doesn't, right? Where maybe somebody, somebody will tune into my stream and think all she does is talk. I want to watch video games. And then I watch a streamer. I watch streamers sometimes when they play, they are billions, 900% and they barely talk. Is that a bad stream? No, but it's a stream that's interesting to me, right? So I think with streaming, you kind of can't really gauge those metrics. And I know some people will say, well, if you have more viewers, you're a better streamer. If you have, but that's not true. Most people who are very popular streamers will tell you I'm not a good streamer. Being popular doesn't make you a good or a bad streamer. It's more so like, are you reaching your target audience? Do you have a community around you? And you found the community that likes what you do. Ripozite, thank you for the gifted. How have you been? Exactly. The streamer and the audience are a niche and they just have to find each other. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't, for example, think I'm very funny. I don't, well, no, I think I'm funny, but you know, if I don't think I have zingers like Heavenly Father does, right? I, I, I can objectively say, I think Heavenly Father is extremely quick witted and hilarious. I'm also funny, but you know, apples and oranges. <laughs> um, apples and oranges, right? And when I play, like tomorrow and, and, and Saturday, when I play Mechanicus, and take my sweet ass time with every turn, some people might think, well, this is a boring stream. Nothing is happening. She's not getting kills in Overwatch or uh, the Fortnite. She's not, you know, playing Roblox. She's not yelling at her screen. Doesn't, you know, doesn't make me a bad streamer. It's just different than what they watch. Edipo, thank you for another gift and I appreciate it, darling. Yeah, I think it's nowadays more than ever, there's more because gaming is bigger. Streaming is bigger. YouTubing is bigger. Finding your niche is even more important. And I'll give you this example. I'm sure you guys, because I know a lot of my audience is older, you will put on a one hour video game review on YouTube. I'm sure you guys have seen like, you know, is Chrono Trigger as good as I remember? Is, is uh you know, playing... Uh, what is it? Daggerfall today. It's like a three hour video. So, you know, they're not doing Mr. Beast stuff, but does it make their content bad? No, it's just different. Yeah, Chrono Trigger is better than I remember. Now that I'm older and I replay Chrono Trigger, I think, wow, it's better than I remember. <laughs> I felt this way when I, when I played Metal Gear Solid for the first time last year. I played it and I went, oh my God. This is even better than I understand. Now that I'm much older and I'm playing this for the first time, this is way better. This is way better than I realize. It's true, Riposite. I think if they don't like those streams, they are weak and they are flesh and their flesh is weak and that's not cool. That's true, pig. And that's going to keep happening. And I think that's awesome. My kid brain couldn't handle Metal Gear Solid. It, it, it feels insane. I cannot wait to replay Metal Gear this year. Weak flesh is easy to chew. Nom, 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 Yum, 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 yum. Hold on. Um, (laughs) 
let me all right we have no um we have no meeting today so we can go a little longer Thank you, Julie. I th it really depends. You you just gotta find you know the streamer for you. And sometimes your favorite streamer will play stuff that you don't like. Like sometimes you just want to watch somebody play Darkest Dungeon, and that's good enough for you. And there's been streamers that I really like, but then oh, here's a perfect example. I love Dolphin Chemist. I love watching his streams. He's great. I love watching Jorbs. Love his streams. He's great. This is not this is not a slight on them, by the way. Please do not think I'm being, but lately they've been playing backpack battle. I don't care about backpack battle. I don't want to watch backpack battle. I don't. So I don't watch them. But you know, they'll be back and they'll play something else that I really love. And then I'll be back to watching them again. Bam. I'm good. Oh, I get you, Janoon. I completely get it. This is why I also love the yapping streams. And also why we got the podcast for the yapping oh oh my god i didn't realize zen was showing her body oh guys i might have to go offline and watch her stream i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> it's just that since i looked at my following to see what um dolphin was doing and he was actually oh another example i really like watching frost prime he's been playing bellatro i don't really like bellatro which is crazy. I like those kind of stuff. Um, of course, Giga is GTA Ving. What else would she be doing? El Mangaka, thank you for the 10 gifted. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Meepo, thank you so much for the bits as well. Thank you. Uh, Samantha, maybe I have allegedly done that in the past. Maybe, maybe allegedly. Um, I, I feel like study with me streamers do that. If you are a streamer that streams study with me, you're probably learning a language or doing that stuff. For myself personally, I just find it harder to focus. It's a gift up. Yeah. I think so too, dog. I think it's just so hard to focus on many things at once. I've even telling you, like, I notice that even in games sometimes, if I'm concentrating, I can't talk as much. It's a gift up. Are you the type who doesn't care how much they like the streamer if they're playing something you don't care about? Sometimes. Um, it's a gift up. Sometimes it's fine. But I think I've just been too busy. So it's kind of like I've been a little too busy. And instead of putting up a Bellatro stream or a um, backpack battle stream, I will just put a YouTube video on. But most times it doesn't really matter to me. Most times. I don't know. I think lately I've just been busier. Have I gotten my first minis? Yes, I did. I haven't painted them yet, though. Anyway, I have to be right back for just a minute. I'm out of water, okay? I am out of water, so I will be right back. Uh, when I study, what when I work on stuff, I like to put typing videos. I put a video of somebody's hands on a keyboard typing. And then that just gets me, it gets me in the work mood. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. And again, I completely get it, right? If people maybe don't want to watch a certain game or anything like that. Do I mean wine? No, I mean water. Be right back.
did I miss? What did I miss? How will I raid my bathroom? Oh, I should go pee. Ipo, thank you for the bits. Warhammer miniatures are just the beginning. Wait till you discover Kingdom Death Monster. What is that? What is that? Pee in the shower? No. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I gotta, I gotta hold my pee in. It's actually perfect, Bricky. I wanted to wash my hair tonight after that maggots story yesterday. Also, uh, thank you to both of you that, um, thank you to both of you and, and, uh, and Heavenly for teaching me about gooning. Honestly, really helped my day. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Nipo, for the bits. Uh, I found something from my father that is really interesting. All right, all right. Let's see if it's really interesting. When I was young, I struggled with reading. Okay, that is kind of cute. Kurama, that is so freaking cute. That is very interesting and very cute. Your dad sounds like a winner. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Mata, I blame you and Bricky. I started painting minis this week and I'm working on a unit of Necrons. Hopefully I'll be starting to paint Necrons real soon too. What is that brooch? It's a little, I think it's a cockroach, right? I know it's heavily inspired by a scarab brooch, but it's a little cockroach. You like it? You like it? Hold on. Let's let's try to not get banned, all right? Let me just <laughs> Let me just What are you doing? You can't just at a person in my channel, a friend of the channel, and be like, I think this person is no 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 no. This isn't this isn't your private space, baby. This isn't a diary. This isn't a YouTube comment section where you can just like say everything that pops into your head willy-nilly. Nah, no, baby. Gotta be nice. In my channel, be nice to him. What you say outside of this channel, I cannot control. But be nice. My pal is here. Be nice to them. Don't make it weird. Come on. Dear Diary, today I think Mata is silly goofy. Thank you, Repo. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. So now, let's... Okay. Things change. I was supposed to sign posters today. But then, because I started streaming a little late, I had an emergency. Um... I was only supposed to stream for another 15 minutes, right? Is that amethyst? Yeah, my birthstone. I'm an aquarium. So now that my meeting is canceled. Do I. Twitch.tuvalu. I really still love saying twitch.television. But maybe I could start saying Twitch Stop Television Tuvalu. Dear Diary, today my Oshi discovered gooning. You know? Aquarium, there's fish in me. I do like sushi. Some momos taste a little fishy. What makes you think I'm a bug sympathizer? Is it because I'm a bug? Is it because I'm one of them? Yeah, the rigging is really, really well done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I figured you would stream till mint stream. I wasn't initially going to simply because I had a meeting at four, but uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of see if I'm going to be biting myself. Because hmm. I have some work to do. So I'm trying to see if the fun and excitement of streaming, plus I want to rest because I'm not taking a day off until Sunday. So I, I do want to rest before tomorrow and Saturday so I can finish Mechanicus. You're an Amethyst as well. February, baby. Let's go. You're clearly here to pave the way for the bug revolution. Hey, hey, stop spoiling my deep lore. Stop spoiling my future lore and projects, please. I don't know how you got this information, but keep it to yourself. Don't tell anybody. 
Don't tell anybody. Me as a Pisces? Oh, I mean, yeah. Feel your feelings. <laughs> Feel your feelings, little Piscus. Ripo, thank you for another gifted. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I'm doing that thing again where I'm like, I knew that today was going to be a short stream, but now a part of me is like, well, why not make it longer? You know, why not making, why not drink the whole bottle of wine? Right? Why not drink a whole bottle of wine? Why, why stop here? Why not, why not go till seven in the morning? You know, let's pop the champagne. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm a Capricorn and I love money. Hey, <laughs> hey. I don't think that's like the only thing, but I get you. I get you. <laughs> that's funny. I look extra cute today. I feel extra cute today. Having a very cute day. I'm having a very cute day. Things are good. Life is good. Unfortunately, we didn't get to record episode, uh, Patreon episode of the podcast yesterday. So I do want to work a little bit on some stuff. Hmm. 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 I, Benny, I stole that tweet. I know Bricky, I don't know if he's still lurking or not, but I stole that tweet from Bricky. Bricky said it out loud in stream when we were collabing yesterday. And uh, you know how I mentioned, hold on, let me open up. Um, you know how I mentioned how, a, like, things belong to me, right? I just steal things, they belong to me, it doesn't matter. And in this case, yeah, sorry, I stole that tweet. It's my tweet now. Great tweet, banger tweet. Um... You know, I don't just steal jeans, the Levi's. I also steal tweets. I shoplifted the tweet. Exactly. Exactly. It's a great tweet. I don't know what else to tell you. It's a phenomenal tweet. It was our tweet. I stole jeans, allegedly. Tweet lifted. I lifted the tweet. It's my tweet. Mm -hmm. I lifted the tweet. It belongs to me now. It's true. It's like, um, it, has anybody seen that movie with uh, Cruella DeVille? I watched it in the plane. It was uh, Emma Stone, Cruella DeVille, that kind of thing. And basically she was, spoiler, but not really. She was drawing a dress. And then because she was working for the lady, the lady said the dress belongs to her. Because she drew it on her property. So it's the same thing. Like, because you said the tweet on a stream with me, it's my property. I, I have it. And I have first mover's advantage. You know? It wasn't in Devil's Wear Prada. It was like, uh, it was the, the new Cruella de Vil movie with, um with Emma Stone. Yeah, the law is the law. You know? And I'm the long gun of the law. Live, laugh, lactate, merch when? Probably not anytime soon. <laughs> um, probably not anytime soon. I don't know. Um, Although it is phenomenal. I think it's, I think live, laugh, hee hee is like my other really big thing that I love. Live, laugh, live, laugh. I think it's even better when you go live, laugh, love, hee hee. I'm the long claw of the law. There you go. There you have it. Live, laugh, lactate is the gamer subs merch. Oh, <laughs> hmm. Not bad. You guys are cooking. You guys are cooking. You guys are cooking. Thank you, Shuki. Welcome. Yeah, it's not guilty until until the court of law decide that it is guilty. And I am the court of law in my own stream. I decide in this stream who is guilty and who isn't. So I, I am the one making decisions. All right, everybody. I have bad news for you. 
I know that since my meeting freed up, I have time to actually spend time with you and love you and appreciate it and yap with you and tell you you're the best. But I need to... I need to rest a little bit because tomorrow is a long stream and Saturday is a long stream. I want to finish Mechanicus and I have to record the podcast tomorrow morning, the Patreon. And I have a meeting that got moved from today to tomorrow. Rob, hello. I hope you feel better so I can start having you work on a bunch of stuff. And I just have in general a few things that piled up that need something need doing. They need doing. I have a few things that, you know, work, work. Yes, my lord. More work? Work, work. And I want to watch Mint on YouTube tonight on my TV. Maybe even in my bed. Wow, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be in my bed with a plate of cut up apples with a little bit of cheese. I'm not going to drink the, the other half of my wine. Uh uh. And watch her YouTube. I know, Krub, especially in bed. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Manina, thank you so much for the first month. And you know what else I get to do that I never get to do? I get to raid Zentrea. I get to raid my sweetheart Zentrea. Usually it's the other way around. She raids me. I want to give back to my princess, to my love, to my sweet wife, future wife, who, by the way, baby, you're running out of time to marry me and move me to Texas so I can eat your tacos and walk your dogs, okay? You're you're running out of time, Zen. I'm moving to Japan with Onigiri and Oni, bro. <laughs> you're running out of time, Zen. You're running out of time, my love. Toaster, your time's almost up. I love you all. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you for being here for the very short stream, a little less than three hours. Um, let me check, right? Two hours and 52 minutes. I'm sorry, I promise I don't hate you. It's just tomorrow and, and Saturday are gonna be long streams and I wanna make sure that I relax and I wanna make sure that I take it easy and uh, I appreciate you all, all right? Bye, my loves. I would say Oyasu Mama, but I'm not going to bed, but I am gonna say Oyasu Mama. Oyasu mama. Oyasu momo. Thank you for hanging out. I'm sorry that it's so short. I love, love, love and adore you all. <laughs> Big kisses. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.